Hello everybody peeps. Hello, hello. We are apparently live. Yeah, something like that, it says in my ear. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's uh, all sorts of uh, strange languages being talked in chat currently. Um, Disco Des, I am Vapefest 2015 unofficial cider distributor. Now listen to me Disco Des, I didn't get any cider last year. Yes. Did I. So, you know what you're going to do this year, don't you? Make sure you save some for me. You've got a special mug and everything oh, yeah. this year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's Mr. Dibley. Look, here we go with yeah. his special mug. Look, I, went and, I went and got this for, for Disco Desi's Cider. Specially made in the Isle of Wight. Yeah. Yeah. It was hand-thrown in the Isle of Wight. And uh, yeah. as I said to Gary moments ago, uh, if he's naughty at home, it'll be hand-thrown by his wife. Yeah. At his head. <laughs> Uh, yes, it is Marco Chief. Yes, and Fuzzy and Phil. Hello. And Rachel says, mmm, cider. Yes, we do like cider. I've got some very nice cider downstairs. I should have brought a bottle in, but there you go. Never mind. I've got juice. Um, Disco Des says, we'll do boys. That's what we like to see, Disco Des. Yes, yes make sure you save some because we'll be there the whole weekend and we'll be <laughs> thirsty. Yes. Anyway, uh, I'll make it about ooh, 10 seconds to 9 o'clock. Yeah. Yep. Um, shall we have the bug? I think we'll stay away from the bug because that might knock our mm. our, our sink out. Um, so we won't have the bug tonight. No. We'll just carry on as we are. Yeah. Uh, have a look at Mr. Dibley. There he's on screen there. There you go. Well, I vape. We're just going to uh, crack straight in, are we? Yeah, I'll make it. 20 seconds past nine o'clock now, so uh, so we're there. Let's have this. Yeah, there we go. The sting, no bug tonight because uh, it just sometimes knocks our sink out, and we don't want that. We don't want to be talking chinglish or anything. So yes, good evening. It is uh, just after nine o'clock. It's uh, nine o'clock and almost a minute past. Uh, and it is Tuesday the 14th of April 2015. Uh, and if anyone from work is watching, hello, because <laughs> they're asking me questions um, this week uh, about my show. So um, yes, if you're watching, hello, John. Uh, and if you're not watching, why not? What can I say? <laughs> Tonight, of course, I have uh, this man with me, Mr. Gary Dibley. With Good two evening. hours, yes. Two hours. Two hours. Arr. Uh and uh, we've got uh, we've got all sorts of bits and pieces for you. Yeah. Hmm. We're just gonna take it as it comes type thing, you know. Ish. We've got we've got bits of VT that may come on this week, they may come on next week. But what we do have definitely this week is um an interview I did with the vape vapor expo guys, uh, Lee and Jay, that I did a couple of weekends ago at the Midlands um, vape meet. Um, we've got some new stories. We've got the latest Not Blown Smoke VT, which is rather good. Um, plus uh, other bits, yeah. But uh, all of that are after the titles. Yes, see you in a minute. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health eVape. UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids.
Yes, good evening, good evening, good evening. And I was looking in chat there, and uh, Chief Keith says he's just stuffed his face. I'm actually quite hungry, I have to say. I've got my juice down here, out of the way. Um, but uh, yeah, a, little, a tad peckish, I have to say, tad peckish. Uh, and just before we started, uh, we were talking about cider, and, and Disco Des has promised, haven't you, Disco Des? Promised Gary and myself that he will provide us with some cider at Bakefest. 2015 in August. Yes. So we're looking forward to that, aren't we, Gary? We are, yeah. Mug, mugs at the ready. Yeah. <laughs> so how's your week been? Let me it's go to this good. one. We'll go to this yes. one now, the dual very, shot. Very good. Very yeah. good. What have you been up um, to? Oh, I won the Grand National, didn't I? I tell you, I had mentioned to you. We had a, 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 luck, a lucky bet on uh, my wife come in with the uh, with the thing and said, pick a horse, and uh, I didn't have a clue. Uh, we've got four legs and a bloke sat on top. Um, so, I had a scan down the list, and there was one in there that wrote, yeah, it was clouds. So I went that one, um, and uh, and I turned around and said, "I'm, I'm going to win." And she went, "No, you're not." I said, "I'm definitely going to win this year," and uh, and it, it romped it home, didn't it? So um, we had fun. I went out buying things for the workshop. Two, I think I put five pound on each way, and and come home with two hundred and sixteen pounds and sixty pence. So uh, yeah, I went and bought some suction for the workshop. Yes, which you will see in a bit of VT later on in the show, yeah. I backed a horse once at quarter to one. Uh, unfortunately, it came in at half past five. Ha ha ha. <laughs> now, I stopped backing horses at the Grand National because uh, every time I backed one, it, it tended to fall over, break its legs and get shot. So uh, I thought I was probably not doing it many favours. So I don't really back horses these days. Uh, I've, had, I've had the odd winner now and again, but I haven't backed the National for many years now. Yes. Um, but there you go. We digress. Uh, yes. And uh, I hope if you did bet, you, you betted responsibly. Uh, and if you won, you uh, spent it unwisely on a new mod. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or in Gary's case, a new suction device for his workshop, which looks very nice. And apparently it sucks rather well. Is that right? It does. It is, it is most definitely the most sucking I've had in this shed since it was built. Um, the, the, the power on it is, is incredible. Um, I had a little uh, a little Tesco Hoover um, to pick it up dusk, you know, the 40 quid little non bagless thing. Um, and this thing swallowed it when I turned it on. Um, it is, I told you, I was doing some sanding um, over the lathe and, and the, the, the hosey thing was over here and, and you could just see the stream of dust flying straight out and, and curving around to to the, the uh, I'm not going to call it Hoover, it's not, it's a Vax Shot Pro. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's good, and I bought, I did, I did put some on a, on a pre-order as well, um, as we were saying earlier, I, I, I like the look of the, uh, the little Aspire, carbon fibre Aspire thing, with a twisty knob on the top, um, and Liberty Flights uh, so kindly sent me through uh, an email, tempting me, just uh -huh. as I had funds in pocket. And I think we may have um, had a little glitch. We had a, we had a little blip there. I noticed <laughs> a little flash in the corner of the screen. So hopefully, yes. hope, hopefully. Uh, we're uh, now not talking in Chinglish. <laughs> yeah. In, and in fact, I now can't even change shot. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it changed eventually. I pressed it about five times. Um, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. Uh -huh. uh, anyway, do continue, dear boy. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I like the look of it. And uh, watched a couple of reviews. It looks for, for the price. It looks a nice little mod. I mean, it's only I think it's 1700 um, milliamp hour battery in there. Um, it's interesting. They they tell me it should be arriving with them this week. Um, the Americans get everything first, don't they? They they've had theirs and the reviews are out and this and the other. But um, yeah, looks looks an interesting little device. And then I treated myself to um, to a load of new coils and this, that, and the other from uh, from my pack. I went I went shopping on there. So um, yes, my wife come to me and said, "Do you know what we could spend your winnings on? We we need some new garden furniture." I was like, "Ah, yeah, no, <laughs> not happening." <laughs> I've just bought a Hoover. It's not a Hoover. A, a Vax Shop Pro. Um, a uh, you know, a new mod and then a load of paraphernalia to go in stuff that I've got already. So um, we weren't talking for for two hours. <laughs> Bonus. <laughs> yeah, come and knock myself in here, and, and I was happy. Yeah, yeah. But, yes, make, it's... <laughs> make sure you keep that uh, that ceramic flag on away from her, because otherwise it would be hand thrown at your head. Um, yeah. And yes, and apologies, we are out of sync once again. 
we were out of sync earlier before you went live uh, and then we were back in sync and now we're out of sync um, so apologies for that it's out of our control I'm afraid um, might have to go back to just broadcasting on broadband um, as opposed to 4G I don't I'm not sure if that's the issue or not um, but uh, we'll have to take the quality down if we do that to like 360 we're going out at 720 at the moment um, we'll see we'll see what happens um, maybe I can go out at that and use 4G for Gary's uh, for the laptop I don't know we'll have to see what happens there I just wish BT would pull their finger out and put a fiber cabinet in because yeah it's it's ridiculous. It's a crazy. Um, but there you go. I'm just yes. uh, ants in the system, says Bruni. <laughs> Quite I've possibly. I've, I've just noticed that Sab has actually put in in our chat that uh, she would like to see my sucker thing. Um, it does. I, I, I'm going to show you that a little bit later, actually. How impressed I was with it. Um, that that features not heavily, but it, it makes an appearance. It does make an appearance. Yes. For I have I have watched. The piece of VT a couple of times, yes, um, as I do. <laughs> I watch all the VTs for the show um, on the night of the show, as well as watching them beforehand and obviously editing them as we go on. Um, but there you go. So, where, where are we going to start with this week then? Shall we go with, uh, yeah, in our kind of team chat, we have various chats going on, and one of them is we share news um, items amongst each other, and then we kind of you know, one person will pick them up for one show. We may not, we may not put them on any shows at all. But you know, if we if we see an article, we put it in there, so we share things around. And uh, very boring. Shared a link to this little story, um, and it's in Esquire. So if you can put the link into chat, please. Um, will Self and his addiction to vaping, uh, and this was uh, yesterday, uh, by Will Self, um, who's, as you know, if you've seen him on things like. Um, uh, 8 out of 10 cats does countdown and things like that uh, he's got an extremely dry sense of humour um, and uh, the article is extremely interesting um, it's, it's very incisive um, uh, and it's worth a read and I would uh, we can't go through the whole article because it is quite long but it's well worth a read have a look at that and we're trying to get Mr Self on one of our shows, if we can, just talk to him because um, you know, if we if we can speak to people in the public eye who are vaping, um, then um, maybe it will kind of normalise things a bit more and not kind of label us all as uh, astroturfs and ants. And if you watched <laughs> Dave Dawn's show last week, the Hayes Hour last Thursday, you'd have seen uh, the website that uh, is a little bit dodgy, really, yeah. Um, made to look like it wasn't, but it is. Um, we won't talk too much about that. It's been all over Twitter, uh, uh, and I was going to bring you something, and I may have it, I may not. Um, but yes, the article by Will Self is it, it, it's it's very good. It's a really good read. I liked that a lot. Did you read that, uh, Gary? You know, I, I read a, a a tiny bit of it. Um, I, I, I skipped it, if you know what I mean. And uh, the, the bit that I liked is, is the, where he describes in there looking through the, uh, the tobacco in his shop window, staring at the, uh, the briar pipes. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, and not wanting to end up being an old fart with a pipe in his mouth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I like that bit. Though, I yeah. did think that was Made funny. Made me chuckle. Yes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that, that was the bit that stuck in my mind the most for some reason. Because you know, I think most of us when we were smokers at some point thought we'd all end up... Uh, particularly me having a shed fetish, um, <laughs> being <laughs> stuck in uh, not fetish, but you know what I mean. Um, that's not like, my colleagues at work think that, that I, I'm going totally off subject again. Um, the, they they reckon that I've got 50 sheds of grey um, because I spend a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I think I, I certainly visualise myself as an old bloke with a pipe in a shed for some bizarre reason. And a huge uh, pile was, of magazines. Uh, new scientist, obviously. Oh no, Turner's <laughs> Weekly. <laughs> <laughs> now before we go on, let me just go back to this shot one sec. There we go. Before we go on, just notice in chat here, I've had to scroll back up. Disco Days, as a vape meet this Saturday at the Priestley Inn near Shepton Mallet, Somerset, from 4pm till late or until we all fall over. 
uh, and if uh, disco days is on the on the cider, that'll be about ten past four. <laughs> so <laughs> Presley in near Shepton Mallet, Somerset, um, uh, four p.m. till late. Yes, there you go. There you are, Des. That's worth at least two pints now. What do you reckon, Gary? I'm going for the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently it's eleven pound a gallon. Uh, Is it? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Um, there's also uh, quite a bit of chat at the minute, excuse me looking down here, uh, about um, different browsers. Yes, I have issues with, with Fire, I mean I use Firefox, Chrome and Internet Explorer 11, I have to say. Um, and I have different things happening on, on each one. Um, so all kind of vapor trail stuff I keep on Chrome and then the other stuff I've got Firefox. But thing, some things don't work on Firefox. Um, no. But they work on Chrome and they work on uh, on Internet Explorer. I just wish there was one browser that was a secure, b everything worked on it, and c Shockwave Flash didn't crash at least three times a day because it does on Firefox. Um, so Firefox, Mozilla, get yourself <laughs> get it sorted, uh, and Adobe of course. Uh, but other Flash players are probably available. I don't know. Yes. Um, but there you go. <laughs> Enough about that. Um, I, yeah. I have I have something really rather random. That okay, I've, hold on. Let me I've, put you on screen. There you go. That, that I've I've just remembered, and, yes. and I I I'm only remembered it because I just looked over and I thought, oh, that's still there. Um, I had uh, a, somebody through a company that we work for, um, do quite a bit of work with. Um, wanted to uh, they've they've seen um, Louis walking around their premises uh, and talking to people with his big thing going on while he's, you know, chatting away and this and the other. Um, and, and they wanted to, to try something. So I'm going to show you what, what they went out to buy and then tell you why it's in my possession. <laughs> oh, a vibe. Yeah, I've, I've got here um, a, a vibe with, with, I'll show you how much of the original car is left. There is like it's it's got about five mil taken from the top. Um, I've got three brand new cartridges and still the brand new cartridge <laughs> spare one that come with the kit. Because when I was up there for a meeting the other day, they turned around and went, "That is absolutely what were you trying to do to me?" So I said, "All right, I'll sort you out." So um, I had some, uh, you know, I, I still had packets of the bulk standard C4 type things, you know, a couple of Egos, um, proper charger, correct charger, um, this and the other, bottle of juice, um, took it down, set it up for her, called today, I said, what do you want me to do with that stuff? She said, put it in the bin. <laughs> and and she's she's already now looking for, for other bits. So uh, I suppose it goes to show, not those those are okay, but they're not, not for, for, for everybody, if you know what I mean. And, and I had a little blast on it. It's really shocking. Is it really? I've not, I've not actually seen one in the flesh. I have this, to say. Is, this is the very vault one. So you've got like, oh, is it, yeah. it says, you know, press the bottom one if you want little vapor and press the bo top one if you want big vapor, double switch. And, uh, and there's no difference at all between the little vapor and, and big vapor. It is absolutely, and it's fully charged and it's functioning and all that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, I thought I'd mention it. Yeah, get the fluke on it next week and... Um... Yeah. So tell us what the, what the voltages are coming out of it, see if there's any difference. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yes, I've not actually seen one of those. Uh, in fact, bring it to Vape Jam. Oh, I'll, have we'll a, do. I'll have a look at it. We can burn <laughs> it together. <laughs> um, yes. Still talking about, um, about um, Internet Explorer, etc. And yes, people still use Internet Explorer. <laughs> I do still use it. Um, but there you go. Not very often. Um, Yes. Okay, right. We digress. Um, let us go to a little bit of VT. And this is the latest VT from the Not Blown Smoke camp. Um, it's been tweeted around today. Uh, and there is some other stuff coming up, which I can't show you yet. Um, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to show you that soon. Um, and it's rather good, I have to say. But here's the latest bit of VT from the uh, Not Blown Smoke camp. <laughs> Most of you have probably seen or heard about the stillblowingsmoke.org campaign that's been launched in California. 
And you may be asking yourself, why is the California Department of Public Health so against vaping when year after year more smokers are turning to e-cigs as a less harmful alternative to tobacco cigarettes? Isn't their number one priority preserving public health? Isn't that their job? Problem number one. The more money Big Tobacco makes, the more money California gets. In 1998, a deal was struck between the biggest Big Tobacco companies and 46 U.S. states called the Master Settlement Agreement, or MSA. This agreement said that these Big Tobacco companies would make yearly payments to the states in exchange for the states dropping lawsuits against them regarding smoking-related deaths and expenses. The amount of money Big Tobacco pays the states each year is directly dependent on how much they sell. Problem number two. The states spent that money before they got it. Most of the states wanted all that money up front, instead of waiting for payments from Big Tobacco each year. So they sold bonds to Wall Street based on the amount they calculated Big Tobacco would be paying them. But then something started happening. Americans started smoking less. Since 2000, on average, tobacco cigarette sales have dropped 3.4% per year. That sounds amazing, but not for the states like California. Remember those bonds they sold? They were counting on money from Big Tobacco, and since it's not coming, they can't pay back the bonds they sold, and either have to take money from other places or risk defaulting. New Jersey, Ohio, and Virginia have already announced they have to take money from their reserves due to insufficient funds from the tobacco money. And with the growing popularity of e-cigarettes, the smoking rate is declining even faster. California and New York are being affected the most because they have the highest populations and are owed the most money by Big Tobacco under this agreement. In 2013, cigarette shipments saw their biggest decline since 2009, and many financial analysts say the cause of that severe decline is e-cigarettes. In 2012, Americans bought over 14 billion packs of tobacco cigarettes and 200,000 packs of e-cigarettes. The following year, sales of tobacco cigarettes decreased by 1 billion and sales of e-cigarettes doubled. Wells Fargo estimates tobacco cigarette sales will decline by 68% over the next 10 years, and e-cigarette sales will increase more than 13 times. So naturally, California is panicking. The way they see it, e-cigarettes are taking money away from them, regardless of the fact that people are getting off tobacco cigarettes. So it's now California's mission to either A, ban e-cigarettes completely and get people back on tobacco cigarettes so the money starts rolling in again, or B, classify e-cigarettes as a tobacco product so they can tax them like they do tobacco cigarettes, higher than normal sales tax, and roll them into the MSA agreement so they too have to pay the states. One of their key arguments is that if e-cigarettes fall under the MSA and also have to make payments to the states, that money gives these states a powerful tool to stop e-cigarette makers from targeting youth. No wonder one of stillblowingsmoke.org's biggest and most unfounded talking points is that e-cigarettes are marketed to children. And never mind that only 14.6% of the funds the states receive from Big Tobacco actually go towards costs associated with smoking or smoking prevention. So the truth? The state of California needs tobacco sales to stay high. Otherwise, they default on their bonds. E-cigarettes are getting in the way of that. It looks like the health of the public isn't the top priority for the Department of Public Health. Their top priority? their wallet. Yes, there you go. Interesting stuff, isn't it? Um, you sell bonds based on money that you expect to come in, but then when it doesn't come in because there's less money being made by the tobacco companies, um, you end up in a bit of strife. Yes, we'll talk about this a bit further after the break. We'll see you in two. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health eVape. UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids.
often imitated, never duplicated. Award-winning service and products from cloud9vaping.co.uk. And now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is sponsored by Healthy Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and pure perfection e-liquids. And welcome back to part two. Um, Gary and I were just uh, having a little chat there through the uh, through the break, uh, and uh, yes, chat are talking about um, somebody who we're not going to name, but uh, his name <laughs> rhymes with ants. <laughs> what did you make of that bit of VT, um, Gary? It's yeah, it's opening stuff, isn't it? As as you know, as as we've looked at in in the recent weeks, haven't we? Yeah. Um, Huge figures there, aren't there? If, if you look at the um, the estimated drop off of of you know tobacco, lit tobacco as such, as as sixty eight percent over a ten year period. I mean, that's massive, isn't it? I mean, I, I wonder with, with figures like that whether they look at the um, you know it, that that's based. I'm, I'm assuming on the figures where they are now, rather than looking at additional uptake intake over that that 10 year period what do you mean children that start smoking yes <laughs> you know if, if yeah, yeah again those it, it's, it's interesting isn't it that that you know that that that's where we stand at the moment i suppose with with the decline and and the increase in in you know, uh, electronic vaping electronic cigarettes and such but yeah you can see why they are ever so slightly um you know got brown trousers can't you Yes. Um, if you think about it, if they are if they've sold bonds allegedly, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, expecting money to come in, it's you know it's like if you if you sell something before you have it and you haven't got it, mm. then what are you going to do afterwards? Um, and I wouldn't like to be a resident of one of those states where that <laughs> has happened because. The money's going to come from somewhere, yeah. um, and it's probably going to come from taxation. Um, and see what chat is saying. <laughs> Graham Gord's ink whistle's certainly gone into one, and there's a lot of expletives that I can't say, mainly because I can't read them because they've been asterisked out, either by the swear filter uh, <laughs> or he's done it himself. Um, but yes. There, uh, there doesn't seem to be much love in the room for Mr. Clance, I have to say. <laughs> uh, and based on what was discovered last week with that website that Dave was talking about in the Hayes Hour, um, mm. made to look like it was, you know, made by one of us, um, but it c quite clearly wasn't. Um, so if we can out that kind of stuff, then that can only help us not being classed as AstroTurf. And I have to say that I saw a post on Facebook last week, and I've got the post, but I'm not going to put it on screen. Um, but it was from a group, a Facebook group with over 10,000 members, and basically it was saying, we don't want to see any posts about advocacy in this group. Uh, and then there was some other stuff 
uh, which I'm not going to say. I didn't read the pinned post that uh, the, this other post referred to, um, but if you're going to deny people who are working for you uh, as a vapor, who are working for the vaping community, uh, you know, unpaid, um, to if you're going to stop them from putting a post up, then really, you know, what are you all about? Um, did you see that post, Gary? I didn't. No, no. But you know what I'm talking about. I've I've heard about it. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, what do you think about a, a group that bans people from putting anything that is advocacy related up? It, it doesn't. It, it's yeah. <laughs> I might use the same sort of terminology that, that Graham has. Um, so, yes, I, I would just say exactly what Graham put up uh, and fill in the blanks is, <laughs> is probably the, the, the same <laughs> sort of feeling. <laughs> um, old Git has just typed into chat. Um, I was chatting with a friend tonight who works at the local docks. He said, vaping now banned because a study done in Canada and implemented by NHS Smoking still allowed, though. Vaping banned because there's something bad in the vapour. Uh, and Rob has put that shocking. Um, <laughs> and it, it is absolutely incredulous, ridiculous, and crazy. I'm uh, assuming when he, when he says docks, he, he means boats and not men in white coats. I would have thought so. Yeah. <laughs> I would have thought so, yeah. Because um, I can't see it, and you just said he works in the docks, and that's what you know we call our local GP in in the, in the south. No, D O C K S. Okay, didn't yeah. get that. Yeah, yeah, as in dockers. Dockers, yes. <laughs> uh, and he says he's livid. Uh, said people can smoke near machines, but vape causes problems. Um, totally crazy. Ridiculous. To yeah, it is totally crazy. This misinformation and. The stuff that is, that gets said that is completely rubbish, complete lies, complete untruths. Um, this is why we need the right information out there. And as vapors, we need to pass the right information on. Um, because only then can we can we beat them, really. We've got to beat them at their own game, but you know, do it sensibly. Um, and not attack people on Twitter, not threaten to do certain things, not send them pictures of nooses saying your time is up, all that kind of stuff. Sensible reaction uh, and positive action. I think that's what we really, really need. Yeah. Um, yes. And some of that, I hope, is going to come from, from the events that are happening this year. Um, next month, we've got Vape Jam. June, there is uh, Vapor Expo. Uh, and then in July, there is the ESIC Expo. And of course, we're going to finish off in August with Vapefest. And I caught up with uh, a couple of guys who are behind the Vapor Expo in Birmingham. We've already spoken to Maria and uh, Amir from Vape Jam. Um, so uh, here is, well, here are uh, the guys talking to me when I was at the Midlands Vape Meet. Yeah, have a little look. I'm joined by uh, Lee Skeldon and Jay Cox, who are behind the uh, Vapor Expo, or the Vapor Expo, uh, which is when? Uh, it's the 11th and 12th of July. The 11th and 12th of July, uh, which is not all that far away, really. Uh, we've got uh, Vape Jam in May, and then, uh, I forget the name of it, but the, uh, the other one in, uh, in Harrogate in June. Uh, and then... Um, the next one is Vapor Expo in July. So guys, tell me more about the event. Um, when did you first discover you wanted to do this and um, what was the kind of rationale around it? Um, well, to start with, I think it was probably the beginning of last year. Um, we were trying to get in the industry with vapors ourselves, so we wanted to set up a shop or do something in the vapor industry. And we just found it was hard to advertise. You can't advertise on Google, you can't advertise on Facebook, any paid advertising you can't pay. Uh, so we started looking to see if there was other shows out there, which there wasn't. Uh, we both come from a promoting background, so we just put two and two together and decided to, uh, to do our own expo. Okay, uh, so you both came up with the idea. Uh, what made you choose the NEC? 
It's the best venue in the UK. And it's central to everywhere else in the UK, so and it's easy to get to uh, by car, by train, it's by an play. airport on its doorstep. Yeah, because we've got a lot of international exhibitors, it's obviously easy for them to get to as well as the visitors. Who have you got uh, international wise coming? Um, well, our main official sponsor is Cutwood, uh, so we're obviously proud to have them on board. Um, and another one we're proud to have is V God. I don't know if you've heard of V God, but they do all the smoke tricks, they've got a massive following in America and over here, you know, a lot of people are starting to follow, so they're the two we're most proud of. Uh, we're speaking with loads of other different companies from over there. Um, so yeah, hopefully we get a lot more on. What can people expect um, on the days? Are both the days going to be the same or is each day going to be slightly different? Uh, there will be different things on each day. On the first day we've got a charity auction which won't be on the second, so it'll only be on the first. Um, most of the other things will be over both days, so people will get... We've got various entertainment, yeah. obviously they might take place at different times, but depending on what day they come, the Saturday or the Sunday, they're going to get the same, same entertainment, the same sort of things throughout both days. Okay, and uh, remind us what the ticket costs are? Um, at the moment, until the 31st of March, them £7.50 early birds. Um, after that date, that will be £10 tickets. So that's £10 per ticket per day? Um, per day, yeah. Uh, and can people bring their children? That's another important thing. Uh, um, well, we've had this discussion yeah. ourselves. And um, from 12 upwards, they can come. That's what we decided yeah. on. Um, we didn't think it was suitable for anyone younger. Obviously, we know that some people have childcare issues, um, you know, getting babysitters. So we'd like to say they could come, but we don't really think it's the right environment for young children. Which is understandable, yeah. uh, given that it's really an over-18s yeah. um, pastime, yeah. as opposed to uh, anything for children. So, uh, yeah, I, I can see your point there with, uh, with young, young children uh, getting pushed in prams yeah. through clouds of, of vapour. Uh, and earlier on today, uh, we witnessed the, uh, the vaping <laughs> cloud chasing competition here at Midlands Vaping. Um, and it was pretty cloudy. It's, uh, it's settled down quite a lot now, um, so much so that we can actually do this recording. Um, but uh, what's it going to be like at uh, the NEC? I take it there's going to be lots of ventilation. Um, there's actually designated areas to vape in. We've got a chill out area and a bar area and a staging area which will all be allowed to vape in. So we've got areas yeah. which can try and contain it slightly, but obviously it's a lot bigger space than what we've got in here at the moment with really high ceilings. So we, we presume the vape, vapour will uh, dissipate quite quickly. And besides that, people can try everything on the stands, but they can't just walk all the way around vaping and blowing big clouds. OK, so kind of going around and exhaling huge plumes of vapour is probably a no-no. Yeah, um, well, I think it's just etiquette more than anything else. Yeah. I mean, you won't, you won't sit in a pub with a dripper blowing big clouds. You've got to be respectful of the people around you. So if you want to do that, go to the areas that we're designating for it. If you just want to have a little bite when you get around, that's fine. But, you know, just, just be courteous of other people. Yeah, uh, not a bad little uh, ideology there, yeah. really. Uh, it is, uh, it's just like smoking, isn't it? You know, in the old days, um, you wouldn't blow out huge plumes of cigar smoke in a restaurant. Well, I certainly wouldn't, but I know some people might have done, or sit there puffing on a pipe. Um, but uh, so you've kind of organised areas where people can, can do some can cloud do chasing. As much as they want, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, the industry as a whole has got to respect vapors. So we want to sort of push that across to them as well. So they can't just freely walk around in shops or shopping centres, in pubs, blowing big clouds. So if we stick to them rules as well, everyone should know the rules. Yeah, and I think that's another point where um, you do get areas where people might want to just kick out huge plumes yeah. um, but that probably doesn't do us any favours um, whereas vaping I wouldn't say stealth vaping but vaping economically yeah. um, in certain areas certainly would help the cause as opposed to uh, make it any worse. That's right um, obviously we're trying to target the event to beginners to advanced so people who are just beginning and on their e 6 
you know, that little ego seeks and stuff. They're, they're not used to seeing these big clouds. So if people want to do that, do it in the designated areas. Just so people, you know, have respect for everyone else that's there who, who's not into that side of it. Some people are there to quit smoking. So they're there to, to kind of get into vaping. They don't know what cloud chasing is about. We've got designated areas and obviously a cloud chasing competition for that. Okay, and, and the cloud chasing competition, is that tube and box or...? Yeah, we'll do both. Yeah, it'll be both, similar to what we've seen here today. Yes, and it was fairly cloudy <laughs> yeah. in here, I have to say, um, because, <laughs> as you'll see, I'll probably intercut it, actually, in between this uh, little bit of interview, um, the uh, amount of cloud that was being exhaled, <laughs> was, <laughs> it was quite a lot. Let me tell you, dear viewers, it was quite a lot. Uh, and it was almost indistinguishable um, from the background vapour. Yes, um, but you will see that. So uh, what else can people expect? Just a fun day out, basically. Um, other than just vaping, we're trying to organise as much entertainment going on throughout the two days as we can. Um, I've been in contact today with a street magician who uh, we're going to try and get there just to walk around the crowd, you know. And, just, and just, he's also a vapor, yeah, so just, he does his yeah. tricks around vaping. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah. well, we basically just want to have a fun day out. Uh, obviously, it's aimed at vapors, but vapors, they come from such a broad variety of people. We want to try and cater as much for everyone as we can. Obviously, this is going to be an annual event, so this is setting the foundations for future events. Yes, it'd be nice to see these kind of events being annual. You know, we've, we've got Vape Fest now, yeah. we've got the other two now this year, so basically, May to August is more or less festival period yeah. um, for vaping, which is fantastic. I'm, I'm loving the whole idea of this, uh, and it's about time we started to get in line with the states. Um, in so much as the exhibitions and the expos um, they've got a lot of catching up to do on what we do in this country I have to say but as a convention ex exhibition type thing that the Americans have us I think yeah um, well, that, that's where we took a lot of our inspiration from um, I mean I like America obviously America a lot and I like the way they put uh, a lot of effort and branding into everything that they do e even the, the, the manufacturers the e-juice manufacturers Everything's about the brand, and it's the same with the exhibitions they do, and they're massive over there. Um, so we're taking our inspiration from events like that, bringing them over to our industry. And putting and, our slant on yeah, it. Yeah, really. putting our, our sort of like our own ideas, and build the industry in the UK in our own way, but taking inspiration from, you know, from America. Yes, and I think uh, it's going to be good. Yeah. It's going to be good, uh, and there's going to be a whole bunch of us um, from Vape Trails TV going uh, to all these exhibitions this year. So it's going to be a pretty full calendar for all of us. Uh, lots of footage to be got and lots of editing to be done. That is for sure. Um, what else can you tell us about the exhibition? Anything else you want to tell us? It's on the website soon for hotels and um, local. Yeah, places to yeah. stay. Um, obviously, the exhibitor list growing. Every other day, we, we're getting new vendors coming on board. Um, obviously, as soon as we can, we get the website updated with all them details. But like we say, it is really, really busy at the moment, and we're trying to organise not just the exhibition itself and catering for the vendors, but now we're trying to put the promotion in towards the visitors and obviously get the entertainment there as well. Yes, all very good stuff. Remind us all of what the website address is. It's uh, www.vaporexpo.co.uk. That's www.vaporexpo.co.uk. It's a good site, actually. Uh, I've, I've been perusing it quite a lot, yeah. as uh, I have done. Well, we're actually making improvements to the site as we speak. Um, we'll have a new version, not completely altered, um, but with more information on there, um, more features. Obviously, like the exhibition's growing, the brand's growing, everything else around it's going to grow with it. So we're putting quite a lot of work and a lot of effort, a lot of time into doing all that. Marvellous. Lee, Jay, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, that was uh, Lee and Jay from Vapor Expo, uh, which is July, not June. Uh, it's ESIG Expo, which is this one. Um, which is the 27th and 28th of June in Harrogate um, and I'll be talking to the guys from that one um, very shortly yes uh, now apologies for the technical issues we have been uh, experiencing again tonight 
Um, it, I'm not sure which end it is. All I know is I am going up at 35 meg. Um, so plenty of bandwidth. Um, it just seems to drop out for some strange reason. I know not why. Uh, we are working in the background to try and find out. <laughs> um, and just to clear up a little bit that was in there, because um, it's been mentioned here in chat, um, they're not saying you can't vapor as you go around. What, what, they're, what they're suggesting is that you don't just go billowing huge clouds all the time. Um, there's going to be certain areas where you can do um, cloud chasing, etc. Um, just to make it a little bit more uh, amenable to everybody. Because uh, some people don't do it. Uh, some people just vape kind of in a normal fashion, if you like normal fashion, but um, not huge, huge clouds. Um, so I think that's what they're trying to do, just kind of make it a nice atmosphere for everybody. Um, so they're not saying that you can't go around vaping, because um, that's what it's all about in the end. Uh, so just to clear that one up, um, anything to add there, Gary? Yeah, I reckon they should get um, a VaxShot Pro, uh, and I'm, a, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not <laughs> advertising for them. But that thing can suck anything out of anything, um, and and I reckon that could have cleared that room in seconds. Uh, and you can you can have a tube coming out the back end of it, filtering outside. It would. Uh, it, yes, yes, sorry, uh, you, you can tell I'm excited about sad life, but there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say. That, that was at the, the back of the shop at Midlands Vaping, okay. So the bit you saw at the front with the, with the, uh, with the gradient, the numbers, yeah. that was at, that's at the front of the shop. Uh, and you couldn't see the person who was taking part. The person was stood by the door. And at one point, you couldn't see them at all. And at one point, you couldn't see the back where uh, Lee and Jay and myself were stood. Um, so they had to open loads of windows. Uh, it was, it was very cloudy in there, I have to say. <laughs> so it was good. Yeah. Anyway, listen, we're going to go to the next set of ads. And when we come back, um, Gary is going to be on with MFT. And you can see his new sucky thing. Yes. Yes. Mm. See you in two. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health EV. UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids. Vapors, Dripper just got 40% bigger. So if you love discovering new e-liquids, tell Dripper what flavors you like and we'll send you 70 ml of juice and at least five flavors. With a money back guarantee and free delivery anywhere in Europe, dripper.co.uk. in this e-cig cloud. Harmless water vapour, right? Pretty much, yes. Compared to a lit cigarette, it's much safer than smoke. But it contains nicotine, and nicotine on its own isn't toxic and doesn't cause cancer. If you're worried about switching to vapour, here are some facts. No tar, no smoke, no burnt tobacco. Cooking your evening meal produces more toxins than are found in exhaled vapour. Tobacco smoke contains toxins at very high levels, and vapour does not. And that vapour contains 6,000 times less carcinogens than cigarette smoke. Electronic cigarette vapour. There's nothing to be frightened of. The only dangerous electronic cigarette is a banned one. And now it's back to Vapour Scene on Vapour Trails TV. Vapor Scene is sponsored by Healthy Vape, 
UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and pure perfection e-liquids. Okay, we are back in the room again. Uh, we did notice a little drop uh, during the ads as well, uh, so apologies for that. Um, we're going to go straight into MFT with um, Mr. Gary Dibley, and he's called this one MFT Wood. Yes, I wonder why. Have a little <laughs> look. Oh, we're going to go slightly over as well, so we'll be going past 10 o'clock. Um, but uh, yeah, never mind. Here we are. <laughs> For a, another week, and and today we are over the fretsaw. Uh, bandsaw is, is still in the uh, in the planning stages. Need to move some stuff around in the workshop, find out exactly where it's going to go, and uh, get the wife to uh, to commit to letting me buy one as soon as I do. I'll be pressing the button. Um, what we're going to do this week, as we mentioned, we might be looking at a, a slab of wood that we were given, uh, which is this stuff. Ha! Oh. Spalted beech, and what we're going to do is look at using or doing something very similar to this that we've done in acrylic um, a, a simple little ego conversion now I'm going to do it with same size battery first I'm actually doing this for once it around about the same size so that's what we're going to do however when you're doing this if, if you add a bigger chunk of wood now you don't have to have a lathe and all fancy tools and all that to do it you could make a very simple box mod and put the gubbins of an Ego in with an 18650. You could even charge it through the uh, screwy in method because the charging circuitry in here is, is built into uh, into Ego section. And uh, I've, I've done a few mods uh, where I've used that as a charging method and they work very well. First stages I'm going to do is, is look at um, tell what I'm going to do first. I'm, I'm just going to chop away because in order, my workshop has been getting extremely, extremely dusty, um, and uh, and finally today um, had a good win on on the Grand National. Um, so I went and bought myself a a proper um, shop vac pro, uh, which I can attach to many things, and and it will suck for Britain. Um, I've wanted some like that for ages, but for other reasons. Um, so yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let me show you that. Pop back into. So yes, I was mentioning I, I bought myself a, a new toy for the workshop now to get excited over a bit of suction, um, leave something to be desired. But it is getting incredibly dusty in here at points and I was running off a cheapy, uh, a cheapy old Tesco Hoover. And because of my uh, my Grand National win I had some spare cash so we went and bought some stuff that uh, that I needed. Um, it's got a little pad you can see next to the switch, there's a little flip up thing on the top there where you can actually feed a drill or something from the Hoover which is great. Um, Going to work out some stuff mounting over the lathes is that and the other, but I just thought I'd show you. If you're, where, where I'm working, it's very, it can get very dusty working with wood, working with this, working with that, with the other. Um, and I do normally wear a mask, obviously, but this is, gonna, this is going to take quite a lot of that out the atmosphere as I'm using the tool, um, which is good, which is it should be. Uh, the Hoover just wasn't cutting it, and this thing should. Right, back to where we were. And there we go, or as I like to call it, the best vac in the world. Um, with a really bad impression. I've got a pen blank here, which I'm going to use as a marker. Um, and as I said, if you were, if you did have access to a lathe and power tools, not everybody does, I understand that. But um, hopefully this is just showing you, if you've got the tools and the things you can do. Um, and like I say, you, you can you can use Ego stuff and all that in a box. Um, you can use it anywhere. I've used... Uh, an ego kit with an 18350 um, to make a pipe and a very damn good pipe it was too. This here is a uh, stabilised, um, it's a pen blank um, and it's uh, double dyed with sort of a pink and a purpley colour uh, dye and then this is um, I would say just dunked in acrylic. It's not, you couldn't make anything that goes in your mouth with this particular 
uh, type of uh, stabilized blank. However, there are some that, that are really done properly and and you can. Um, this stuff, the dye is likely to come out. You, with, with this, it's mainly for a pen. So you'd turn this and you'd finish it with what they call a CA glue finish, which is super glue. Different types of glue, different uh, viscosities, and we're going to show you that on our little ego. Um, we're going to apply a super glue CA finish uh, to this once we've uh, got it all done, drilled out, and this and the other. We will be doing that. It is a really nice, durable, and incredibly shiny surface when it's done. I think you'll be amazed at just how it works. I'm using this as a marker just to show uh, when my man in the Isle of Wight cut this chunk of wood he did it exactly to pen blank size so I'm just going to be realistically marking off I'm going to have to go in a tad because this is very uneven um, let me just do it quickly now while I'm here difficult to see what I'm doing but I want to keep it roughly square it makes it easier when we get it in the um, in the lathe I just want to see roughly how that sort of pans out always easier when you when you're clamping it in the lathe to have a rough square but I'm taking this a little bit more to allow for the um, sort of unevenness of, of one edge but once it's in and I'm rounding it it'll be cool let me get this powered up I'm going to start uh, zipping this through um, I don't know if you want to see that process but uh, basically it's feeding that through a um, thing on what's sitting saw and an end off back into I've rigged up the hoover it's not a Hoover, it's a Vexhop Pro, um, and uh, and he was a bit too noisy. So what I might have to do with this is, is clean it up as we go. But basically, I'm just feeding this. I'll show you the process. It's quite nice and simple. We'll just pin it down because the blade's already in. Mind your finger. And that should start to uh, show us some of the grain that's, that's actually in there. Now, yeah, it's a bit annoying. Not sure yet. I might have to take. Yeah, I might have to. What I might have to do is measure up where I'm going because where, the, where this was, he'd use this to cut out for a bowl. Um, I need to have a quick measure up to make sure I've got enough. Uh, in this bit here prior to that I can get that bit gripped in the jaws in the lathe um, and turn this I need to do some thinking let me just see how it's going to work I might have to cut another chunk off um, I'll come back when we, we're just about to clamp that in the lathe but we've sort of got a plan going somewhere somewhere he says somewhere right so I've got me uh, me little cut off now I've decided to do something a little bit different in, in with that because the, the bit that I cut off I can still use this for a uh, pen but I found whilst looking for a uh, smaller type Ego, one of these, uh, the little Mini. Now I'm going to just quickly knock up Mini form factor. Um, I'll do a bigger one at some point for said person. But I, I just, I don't know why, I want to see a Mini Wood um, Ego. So I'm going to make it. One of those things, playing, making it up as we go along. We haven't got a clue. Now I'm just going to stick this in my jaws of the lathe and I'm just going to bring in my rear centre and what I'm going to do is, is just position that up now you could mark this out and you could do all that sort of stuff but I just want to roughly centre it get it gripped in nice and tight give it a spin see how it runs Everything out of the way. I'm just going to use that to mark the centre. 
which is way out. I might just give it these little cuts on top to get it bang on. Uh, yeah. Might have to because it's it's a, a different shape. It's not perfectly square all the way down, so we're just going to give it a rough, rough centre. Sod's law now might always oh, going to be being smacked in the middle, only ever so slightly off. Look at that. Git. Should have just trusted my judgment, shouldn't I? is just get out uh, a, uh, a five mil bit and I'm just going to run that in ever so slightly to give me a point and I'll tell you why in a tick. That'll do me there. I like to have a decent grip for my revolving tailstock because when that's in this is what clamps up on the wood and then that tightens off which keeps everything nice and tight now I'm just going to bring them a tool rest and when you're setting up your tool rest you've got to get it as tight as you can but without any knocks And that is relatively tight. One thing I've got to do is change the tooling on my turning tool. Um, and I'll be changing this blade. This is a, a tungsten carbide blade. I'll be changing that over to a, um, what do you call it? It's, it's, it's a much sharper one for wood. Uh, when I think of it, I'll come back and say it. Back in two. Right, so I've found my, my blade. Now I just use uh, a power tool. It's got a little, you shouldn't really do this, but it just makes it a damn sight quicker to get the bloody thing off, he says. Battery's going flat. What a donkey. Now just switch your blade over and give it a little uh, nip back up. Must remember to put that on charge. Now I'm going to do because I've set everything up. I've got all the uh, everything centered. Everything's down tight. I'm now going to start um, rounding off this blank. Now at this stage, it's a very good point to be having safety goggles. I would normally be having now the uh, the um, Super Shop Vape Hoover uh, under there. Um, sucking out the dust, but it will kill the, um, the recording stuff. So let me just take this, we'll start rounding it off, see how we use. some properly nice seasoned wood that turned down so so easy let me just um, give that a little bit more of squaring off With that. that's, that's a brand new blade by the way um, it's a brand new TI blade and it is as sharp as buggery that's why it made absolute uh, mincemeat of um, 
of rounding that down. So what I'm going to do now is roughly look at, I've got more than enough on that little bit there to make me um, my spalted beach mini thing. Um, I need to go away, I've got to take a measurement uh, of the internals of this top cap um, which will need to be drilled in in this end and I need to take a uh, well a, a dimension of this top cap which is where I need to drill down from because effectively what's going to happen it will seat back in that way as it is from the top so I'm only drilling one hole but I've got to make sure the hole that I'm drilling um, is, is enough for this to uh, to seat back down into so I've probably got to go away and, and dissect ease this section out on the battery um, and uh, get a good measurement on the inner diameter because this doesn't look like a standard ego type fitting it's a bit narrow that will then give me uh, the drill bit size I need to feed into my pilot hole that I've already made and it will give me a depth that I need to feed that to um, it's going to be a bit bigger than this many when it's finished um, bill sanded down all finished and uh, and like I say we'll do the, uh, the CA glue um, final top coat on it Back in two, time to do some measuring. And after just saying I'll be back in two, um, and we'll show you that measuring stuff and, and all of that, I just checked the timing on the videos and uh, and it was running out rather rapidly. Um, so I'm going to leave it at this point. Uh, next week what we'll be doing is, is cracking on with, um, it's going to be a simple case of, of literally just drilling out. Um, and when we've drilled out, We'll, we'll be doing uh, the shaping, um, a bit of shaping, powering off, um, and, and we'll get that done rapidly so we can start to move on to the finishing and, and the uh, and the CA glue finish, um, that sort of stuff. Like I say, it, if you haven't got the tooling to do this, there are ways of doing it. I've seen people who have uh, turned a bit of wood like this with, with, a, with a drill, you know. Um, you can do it to a certain extent in a pillar drill, but it's always best to have the proper tools to do the proper job. Don't rush out and buy a lathe to, to make a mini Ego. There are many other things you can make on it, but you, you don't have to have it round shape, this any other. You can put it in a box. And if you can see just under my arm there, super vac. It's just about to tidy up all of this dust, and, uh, and I'm going to go and have some dinner. So, um, I'll hand you back to Marco in studio for now. Next week when we come back we'll be, uh, as I say, shaping, finishing and, and hopefully uh, getting it to a state where we can um, make it work. Cool. Catch you later. Now I was going to go back to Marco in the studio, but since recording that little bit I have been turning this. Um, and this is the, uh, the blank I showed you earlier, which is a little pen. Um, and it's finished naturally there's there's no finish on this at all it's a stabilized blank as I said so this will finish relatively well with uh, with just micro mesh and, and sandpaper um, but I made this one for the wife um, yeah I just sort of show you same sort of principles as what we're doing um, but this stuff is is as I said earlier double dyed wood it's not the sort of stuff you want to use for anything that goes in your mouth um, because it's not fully soaked in acrylic it's sort of just double dyed and the dust that comes out of this stuff and the way it finishes is not good for the gob um, but yeah pen on the lathe didn't show you how I made it but uh, there we go back to Marco now in the studio And there you go. Um, those of you watching live um, would have uh, had a little bit of interruption there. If you're watching this on catch up, um, there wouldn't have been an interruption um, because you're likely going to be seeing the local record that I've done and will be posting up later. Um, so apologies to uh, everyone in chat uh, watch and everyone in there, YouTube watching live. Uh, we seem to be having issues and I don't know what they are. We don't know what they are, but we will 
try and sort them for next week. <laughs> Gary, um, <coughs> help me. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, it's something to do with our indigestion settings. So uh, much Rennie next week, mate. Rennie? Yeah, indigestion settings, apparently, uh, are all over the shop. Yes, the ingestion settings uh, oh, okay. at, yes, at, yeah. at YouTube. Yeah. Yes, uh, it's, a, it's complicated uh, in so much as it is, but it isn't, but it could be, yes. Anyway, let's, uh, let's hastily retreat. <laughs> before the stream drops um, so it, it kind of leads me to say thank you so much for sticking with us and tuning in this week and don't forget tomorrow night it has been Wednesday it's the cave with Mr Matt Gerrish uh, and uh, Ridian more than likely yeah um, on Thursday it's the Haze Hour with Dave Dawn and Keith and then it's Monday Drips and Tips with Andy and Davey uh, and probably part two of when Marco met Davey yes when I was at his house for a few hours drinking coffee uh, <laughs> and uh, yes and then uh, I did other stuff um, on the way back home um, from the uh, the vape meet I was at I'm digressing but there you go uh, and Gary and myself hopefully we'll see you without interruption next Tuesday night say good night Gary good night we'll catch you next week <laughs> and don't forget of course there is our Y4 radio every night of the week um, links going into chat as we speak um, we will see you next week. Thanks for watching. Proudly sponsored by Health Evade. UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquid.